All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. I am extremely excited right now because we have a comparison side by side of two varieties that I'd really like to compare. And unfortunately, because of just the way nature works, you can't always control it. And you can't always get the fruit side by side. You can't always even get the, the trees to fruit exactly how you'd like them. Um, so to have two varieties that I know are very similar to each other, comparing the two together, um, and have them at the same time and be able to present that in front of you guys, I think is, is a nice little treat. Um, so we have a variety here called Conde, and we also have a variety here called Azores Dark. We've talked a lot about Azores Dark in the past. Um, they're both hardy Chicago types. We've talked about hardy Chicago types. We did a comparison even this year of the two of them or of, I'm sorry, not the two of them, but uh, of five different hardy Chicago types that I'm growing. So across the board, what's nice about the hardy Chicago types is you can pretty much get them all to fruit. I mean, that's kind of a guarantee in my climate. They are one of the easiest to fruit. I'll show you the hardy, the um, Azores Dark first, because I couldn't get them both in my hand to situate, situate themselves correctly. That's the Azores Dark. It's typically um, a bit strawberry flavored and some Concord grape notes, especially when it gets really well ripened. Uh, it gets a bit figgy, so it kind of tastes like a Concord grape, a strawberry, and a fig all in one. Very high sugar content, and it's very thick, uh, unlike some of the other hardy Chicago types I've tried. Norella seems to be quite similar and also quite an impressive fruit. Here is the uh, Conde. This is one from Thierry's collection in France, Figues du Monde. And this was really his favorite not too long ago. I don't know if he still considers it his favorite, but he was really ranting and raving about this fig um, to the point where I said, oh, I have to really try to acquire this and taste it and grow it. Um, I actually spent... Um, quite a bit of money on this tree. This is the most I think I've ever spent on a variety by far at the time. It was a $300 tree that I purchased uh, of Conde because it was so rare in the United States. The price was obviously so high. And because I saw the photos of it, I knew that Thierry is a, is a respected grower. I wanted to see what this fruit was all about. Little did I know after acquiring it and seeing other people's uh, thoughts on it and them tasting it, um, as well as myself, it actually is just the hardy Chicago type. Um, so I was a little disappointed in that because I know how much I love Azores Dark. I didn't really think anything could possibly beat it. Uh, if it did, then that'd be awesome and that's such a great thing. Um, but for me, my money is on Azores Dark. You know, I know what I, know what I like. Um, I imagine it'd be hard for me to, for it to beat it. So we're a little biased going into this, but you can see among the two, they are quite different. So Conde has an interesting pulp pattern that a lot of people have noted. And that's one of the reasons why they're like, it's not a hardy Chicago type. Everything about this fruit is a hardy Chicago, but not every single hardy Chicago is the same. That's why they have so many different names. That's why when you grow them all side by side, there are these very distinct small differences between each other. And that's why for many years I thought it'd be a really good idea to grow Malta Black as well as Azores Dark. Now I'm of the camp that it doesn't make sense to actually grow both because of what I've learned about Malta Black and how the soil was affecting the flavor of it. Not that I don't like Malta Black, but um, there is a difference of flavor, but I don't know really necessarily right now that's why my recommendation has changed because the information I have available to me has changed in that the soil, it's so dry where the tree was that it was really intensifying the flavor of Malta Black to the point where it was a really, really good fig. So I don't know if it is a really, really good fig. Now that I've moved it in a, in a location that gets a lot more soil moisture, it's gonna be, maybe even I had it in a pot, which I think is my inevitable plan is to put it in a pot I have an air layer on my tree. We're gonna put it in a pot. We're gonna grow it out for a number of years, just like these other hardy Chicago types that we've been trialing, Norella and hardy Hoboken and Sangwa Dulce. 
because I want to see if it can stack up to Azores Dark in a container. Um, you know, the, the comparison is just not necessarily fair. And, you know, there's so many, we talk about this all the time, but even just planting these things in containers, who's to say that one's better than the other? Because, you know, if I planted them all in the ground and had them very mature over a number of years, then who's to say that even Azores Dark would be my favorite out of these multiple varieties that I've tried? I think they're all very special because they are just hardy Chicago types just by their nature. What that says about them, they're top of the tier, top line, top of the line figs. So, you know, um, I don't know. There's a lot to discuss about this. And I, I've talked a lot about different points in the past, guys. And maybe I'm, you know, talking too much about it and really making you guys a little bit crazy. But this one here, at least, is Conde. We tried it last year, um, realized it was a hardy Chicago. Now this year, it's finally fruiting to where I actually have a good representation of the fruit. Um, I had a lot of earlier fruits, but the birds were getting them every single time on that side of the yard, especially where those trees are. Don't know what that's about, but uh, the birds really like this. So let me, let me try this one here. It's very good. It's a very good fruit. Um, really good sweetness. It's nice and thick. Uh, it honestly tastes a lot like Azores Dark, you know, like a really well ripened Azores Dark. Let me see here with a side by side. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's the thing, right? There's such a small difference. But if you really know your figs, it's not really that small of a difference, is that the synconium or the shell, the skin, and even the pith, you know, if you think about this fruit, man, it's just such a, it's just a better fig, guys. I'm sorry. It's just a better variety. You have the, the pith, which is this white part here, not the pulp. The pulp is red, but all this white part here on the edge, and then the skin, if you include all that in, let's just call that the synconium. Let's this this just for the sake of I don't really know what to call it exactly. But the outer shell of the pulp, everything outside of the pulp is very thick and soft and um just perfect in its own little way. Like you know, if you had some jam and you took the jam and you're looking at the the, uh, the cracker aisle, you're looking for different crackers or whatever it is you want to put your jam on, and you're trying to figure out what would you put your jam on that would make the best experience, right? Maybe you put it on a bagel. Maybe you put it on an English muffin. Maybe you like it on waffles. Whatever that, that breading is or whatever that thing is, that's the perfect thing right there. That right there is the perfect cracker for fig jam. Uh, it's, the, it's the fig. And it's amazing that nature has been able to do that. Whereas the Conde is so vastly different, actually, in that sense, is that the Conde reminds me of, like, um, a, has a thicker skin to it where you can peel off the skin, and you can even see that on this particular one. It's peeling off. It's not very uniform. So the skin and the pith and the synconium is not very uniform. See how it separates like that? And all you're left with is the pulp. And the pulp's good. The pulp's, the pulp's nice and thick and jammy and sticky, but it's just not the experience, the eating experience of having that on that perfect cracker that, to me, makes Azores Dark above and beyond any other hardy Chicago type I've ever tried. Um, just flat out. I actually have some Norella over here. I want to try it because this is my number two that I would at least in this current moment consider my number two. Let me open these up. These are not as well ripened, but I w I'm curious to see the, uh, the pulp situation that I just mentioned, that cracker situation.
So I don't know. It seems like the skin is coming away from the pulp a little bit more than Azor Stark. I always thought of Norella in a similar way. So there's kind of the differences. And then let me try to find a Azor's Dark here I have on this plate. Um, is this an Azor's Dark? This is either Azor's Dark or Conde. I can't remember. This is either Azor's Dark or Conde. I think this is the Conde. I think pretty sure this is Conde. I think that's all I got right now. So yeah, maybe this is Conde because it's coming away from the skin right there. It's coming away from the pulp. Let me try this. Yeah, I think that one's Azor's Dark. Here's Conde, by the way, look at that. You know what it is too, is that Conde has a, a really nice berry flavor. It's more, it's got a nicer flavor, I think. Wow, yeah, that's really good. I'm pretty sure this is Conde. It could be Azores Dark. They're so similar. How do I really know? I have to, there's so many figs I picked on this plate here, on this bowl. I picked like probably 50 figs today. So I didn't keep great track of them. I do know that this one though is indeed Conde and the other one I ate was Azores Dark. Anyway, that was extremely good. Actually, I don't, I'm so hard to know. But anyway, this Norella, let's go back to this other point here. Let me try this. It doesn't seem as uniform I don't know. I really don't know, guys. You know what it is, too? Every fig is so different from each other. Even just on the same tree, fig to fig, it's just like, what is even happening sometimes, you know? Um, well, I guess we didn't keep good track, and that really affected us on my thought process here. I think pretty sure this is Azor Stark. Anyway, I think that's my point here, guys, is that, you know, I really like Azores Dark, obviously, for the texture, that overall experience, like I mentioned. It has a great flavor, too, but Conde seems to have a slightly better edge in terms of the flavor department. But it has a, uh, a lower edge here in terms of the texture. And maybe the one that I was really impressed with actually just right here was Azores Dark. I don't know. It could have been Conde, could have been Azores Dark. The world may never know. Anyway, so that was this little video here, guys. The comparison there of some of the Hardy Chicago's. I think probably Conde, you know, Azores Dark, I still would say is my number one. Conde and Norella are right there as, you know, two and three are tied for second. I think they're great figs um, in their own way, and I really do recommend them. I'm going to continue to grow them, evaluate them, um, because to be honest with you, if uh, if I keep them long enough, they're going to continue to change. They're going to my my opinions are going to continue to change. So although maybe on this particular year it's 2021, the end of the season, who knows? In 2022, 2024, my opinion might change, but. I can guarantee you this, Azores Dark is so far a much superior Hardy Chicago than any of the other ones I had. And it really is in that eating experience, I think. We'll see you guys soon, all right? Thanks for watching. Take care. Hit that subscribe button. And uh, check out our blog, figboss.com. Thank you.